So I'd love to hear from each of you, uh, not only how you've kind of managed growth to maintain your culture, or maybe you've embraced it and how your culture has evolved and, and what maybe some of those different techniques you've used have been so far. Let me start with you, Marlene. Sure. Um, well, really, I mean, the interesting thing with, with, with Crispin is, I mean, when, when I started, everyone in the agency absolutely um, met, as an example, Alex Boguski coming in the door. I think he interviewed every single person. Obviously, that's not possible anymore. Um, so, you know, as we've grown and basically had to recruit more and more people, it's been critical that those folks continue to meet the right folks as they come in the door um, and interview with a cross-section of folks in the agency that, like I had mentioned prior, have been around in the agency and understand sort of the DNA of the place. Um, what's interesting about the shift as we've grown and how it's impacted our culture is essentially everyone who, who you know, is accustomed to basically being a doer and focusing on the work and stewarding the client relationships um, from you know all levels, you know, basically have has um, you know basically become management now. And so, um, while I have the title of you know quality of life director, really my job is to facilitate the enculturation of all the folks that come into the agency. But we've also had to um, burden's not the right word, but basically clear the path of a lot of folks who initially were just focused on the work to basically make time to um, sit with their teams, talk with their teams again, enculturate them into the way we do business. Um, and I think that was a little bit of a shift in thinking for everyone just because that used to happen basically organically. Um, you know, you would spend time with, like I said, partners or senior level folks or you'd be um, involved in meetings uh, that you were able to basically sit in when we were a little bit smaller. And, and now as there's a lot more people working on any given type of business, those opportunities become less and less for a lot of folks. Um, so you have to sort of artificially uh, you know, create those types of interactions uh, to keep folks inspired and keep them uh, motivated and feeling engaged and involved in all the things that we do within the agency. Um, so that's been sort of a, a cultural shift for a lot of folks there, people who really just were, you know, like I said, head down on the work, stewarding the, the business, if you will, now realizing that a portion of their time had to be spent against this, and um, and that was a little bit of a shift in mindset if, if for us. If someone has been there eight years, how does it, does it feel almost the same like it did to you in the beginning, even though obviously you know, the scale is so much different. Does the energy feel similar on some regards, especially the two locations now? Two locations brings up you know, an interesting challenge, but I think, yeah, the, the spirit and the energy I think still is definitely uh, similar because it's rooted in basically the mission and the core of who we are, and I think that's something that, again, used to be handed down organically or you would learn that wisdom or that information firsthand from the folks you engaged with you know, at the most top level now. Um, now it's basically communicated via um, someone who's, you know, spearheads that basically and facilitates, um, you know, case study sharing and facilitates uh, the learnings between departments and what's working on this client and what's working on this one. All of those things used to happen naturally. So, you know, there's a lot of communication now, you know, an abundance of town halls and fireside chats and things like that um, to keep people you know, uh, abreast of everything going on because there's so much going on at any given time. Yeah. Michael um, or Darren, how are you guys kind of playing a smaller, tighter culture, maybe to your advantage? Sure. Well, I think that, um, you know, I have um, um, tremendous admiration for Crispin Porter as an agency and the size is, is overwhelming to even think of that many people in the management thereof. But, you know, at, at around 40, you know, I think that, you know, here in New York, it's a big open space with no walls. And I, I really think that the agency sort of exudes that. Um, you know, culture is important to, to everyone from the, you know, people who, who might clean up to the receptionist to myself and everyone wants to feel inspired. Um, and it really comes back to talent. Um, and when you're trying to do something great, um, you know, you, you don't want to have a weakest link. And so from HR to the, to the parties that we have internally to the lunch that we order for the, for the agency on Friday, it's very much uh, teamwork inspired in that we really want to hear from everyone and we really want uh, to motivate everyone at the agency to, to help to build the agency. So we really try to, you know, live it and breathe it by empowering our staff to understand the opportunities that they have um, and how a smaller agency might differ from a bigger shop um, and the benefits that that, that brings um, and also the greater level of responsibility that that, that brings. Right. Dan, any thoughts? I'm give Michael's <coughs> uh, voice a rest. Uh, and answer this one. I think, you know, us being around 45 people, we're not to the point where we've, I almost feel like our, our culture right now 
um, is probably the best that it's ever been. Uh, and I don't know if that's completely related to, to our size or not. Um, I think if we were 60, 65 people in one space, it may start to feel a little different. Um, we're not at that point yet, so you know, I'm not sure you know, how that would change things. I think it's also a, a combination of two things. Um, and for us, you know, obviously, for most companies, talent is obviously an extremely important thing. So mm -hmm. I think if everybody's passion is rooted in, in kind of producing great work, um, and that thread is kind of woven through the whole fabric of the company, if you will, is a really important thing. Mm -hmm. All of the all of the extras, and then there's all the extra stuff, you know. So we, you know, we have our annual party at Peter Luger, you know, every year. We, you know, we rented out the ice at Chelsea Piers to go ice skating in Belmont and all that stuff to get people out of the office and not just, you know, a happy hour or you know, get people out of the office and kind of talking, collaborating, you know, creatively is a really important thing. Um, I also think. No matter what size you are, I think it's a we use it to our advantage a lot because of our size. Is really giving people the feeling that they can not just make a difference, but truly grow within the company and really have an impact. Of you know, we don't have, I don't know what we're going to be doing in ten years from now. You know, two or three years maybe, but ten years I have no idea. So when you when you talk with people and they really want to make a commitment to your company and you they see that they can make an impact, not, not only in the short term, but the long term. I think that really, um, it helps the culture and the internal growth inside your company. Uh, to say unusual, that I found we were doing, so um, at Icomillion as a reference point, I always felt that we almost created this perception of like us against the man, and part of that is what kind of drove the guys to work you know, crazy hours and so on to, to always kind of propel us ahead. And then we had this, you know, almost overnight, now all of a sudden we were the man, like, you know, we were in this huge shop, we're like, oh crap, who's our enemy now? And we almost had to kind of like fabricate a whole new person to like rally the guys against, which I thought was a really interesting kind of overnight culture shift in the business.